This is Catliantha Zagarig Wax African Beauty. The beauty is in the name of the orchid, not the appearance. And she's one of many I've been rescuing in the year of 2023 after messing around with Lekka and self-watering all the years that I've had her and not getting it right. And that includes many other orchids that I'm going to feature in this video and give you an update on because they are all in a form of rescue where I used lava rock with self-watering in the hopes that I can bring them through the winter. I'm going to update you on the progress from the ones that I started to rescue back in June all the way up to recently in September, October. I hope to see you on the other side of the intro and while the intro is running, would you please be so kind as to already give this video a like. Thank you so, so much. Alrighty. Zagarik Wax African Beauty did fantastically for two years in Lekka and self-watering and then I started to tweak the ratio of the Lekka a little bit and from then on in it was all downhill as you can see. So she was one of the first to go into lava rock and self-watering in order to rescue her and not lose the orchid entirely. Now, she's still with us. That is a good thing. She still had enough energy in her to produce a root system, which is an even better thing. And the root system is now hydrating, which is fabulous. The real test is now coming during the winter months and that's why I am documenting this right now before we go to December, January and February where low light levels, cooler temperatures may result in the complete decline of the orchids. But I wanted to show you how lava rock can save an orchid if you are in the thought process of deviating away from bark and would like to try to get into Lekka and self-watering or any kind of semi-hydroponic setup and if you're not getting it right. The whole purpose and intention of videos like these is to showcase and document how the rescue effort is working out, how the recovery of the orchid is progressing or not, and also to prove a point that it works if the conditions can be maintained throughout the rescue period, which is not the case in my case. For that reason, this video is coming out now because I do not know what we are going to be faced with for the next three months. And if the orchids are going to decline, then I can't actually prove a point saying lava rock works if I then show you in March or April a dead orchid. I do not want to put out misinformation by saying this was looking promising in December, but so that's why this video is coming out now, even though we haven't seen much progress in the shape of new growth that would give us the feeling that, hey, result, no, not yet, not in my case, but the concept works. The biggest result for me so far is the fact that she grew a fabulous root system. The back is hydrating, the front was hydrating this morning, so I'm doing the wet dry cycle in a scent, but with lava rock. Lava rock does not have evaporative cooling. For that reason, I'm choosing this media. Bits of Lekka that you see in the pot, I left those there because they were attached to roots that were viable at the time. But Catlianthes being bifoliates, they also have a little diva attribute and they dump their roots very, very readily when disturbed. That is also why I was so reluctant for all these years to put them in lava rock because lava rock rock is really, really nasty when it comes to repotting. It's not as forgiving as Lekka would be. But anyway, you can see that Zagarik Wax African Beauty still looks the same at the top. These two pseudobulbs in the back, they had already deteriorated, but she has a viable root system that I would like to carry through to the winter because from what I can tell, there is a teeny tiny little eye starting to swell Let's see right there. Now, that will be interesting. Hopefully that will make it. It's gonna be a very, very small growth. She's a shadow of her former self, but I am hopeful with the root system and with no evaporative cooling in the pot that we are still going to be featuring this orchid in 2024. Watch this space. Speaking of watch this space, if you have not subscribed to the channel, would you please consider doing so? because I have other rescue orchids and I keep things real on the patio. I do not fudge things. I will tell you my mistake. And if I know my mistake, I will tell you what not to do, what you can do to avoid it in advance. So you don't go through this process with your orchids and possibly lose orchids like I have done 
Nope, you will have the solution handed to you so that you know what to do in order to save an orchid until the right ratio with LECA can be determined. That is all I'm going to say about that. You can clearly see in the years that I've had these orchids, I have not been successful. Again, another bifoliate and in the same video as the Zagreek Wax African Beauty was my Catliantha Little Fairy. Did also superbly for two years in LECA and self-watering and then I tweaked her as well and and boom, we've had issues ever since. If you see any scale on this orchid, those are dead bodies. I don't mess around with these orchids too much because the important thing for me is to keep the root system alive and not have the abrasion of the lava rock take out any active root growth. So I'm not into wiping the leaves that much of these orchids that you're seeing in this video. And for that reason, we also have natural fertilizer over there. But the little fairy, same principle, chunky lava, a rock is in there self-watering you can see the roots are hydrating there is no sign of active growth she would be blooming around about this time of year but <laughs> yeah i'm quite happy that she's not even trying to do that that spike would be cut off anyway but her root system is active and has really enjoyed the lava rock so far you can see how her structures are supposed to be compared to how I almost decimated this orchid into nothingness. But here she is. The concept is working really well. Again, for now. And I say for now because rescue orchids need a lot more babying, a lot more perfect conditions in order not to weaken further. This is my Lelio Catlia Luminosa. She was doing very well in Lekka and self-watering as well. Meanwhile, I did not tweak the Lekka ratio on this one, but she did not appreciate the evaporative cooling in the years when I stopped heating my growth space in the years when I stopped using supplemental light. And then two years later, we came to this stage in 2023. She was dropping leaves very, very quickly. And I was like, yeah, I'm losing the race. I'm losing time here. If I want this orchid around, she has got to go into lava rock as well. And look at this look at this there are some real positive signs of progress clearly she is not a very vigorous root grower so every root is precious and they're doing pretty well with the one exception that dingling here has been a little bit too let's say generous with the fertilizer so i've piped that down and the reason that the roots are still wet is because this morning they all got a flush i am very pleased to say <laughs> despite her having also been attacked by scale which is normal with weak orchids the scale seem to have a radar for weak orchids well all orchids as a matter of fact but more <laughs> They seem to find weak orchids so much quicker. So I'm just glad I still have a leaf here that can function while this new growth had to grow and produce some roots. So we've still got the Luminosa. She never bloomed in my collection, poor thing. She tried her best to grow for me and then I got the hint. The evaporative cooling was not to her liking. Luckily, I got the hint right on time. This is an orchid I've had in my collection for five years now. <laughs> you wouldn't think it. This is Cattleya rex. Cattleya rex, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it can grow in Lekka and self-watering. I just haven't figured out how. And this orchid being a seedling from Jump, well, I can also tell you that it was time to stop experimenting if I wanted to save this orchid and see if I can't have her grow to something that may eventually bloom for us in the seven years that we have to wait for it by putting it into lava rock and semi-hydroponics. It's the classic semi-hydroponic setup because I don't have tiny, tiny pots that would have a mask around them to make it self-watering. That's the only reason this is the classic semi-hydroponic setup. Otherwise, self-watering would be my go-to because this orchid is indoors all year round. Well, we have a matured new growth and three roots growing out of that mature new growth. I am not going to pick this orchid up again because you can see there is a root tip right there. But what I am going to do is pan you down a little bit because you can see a beautiful root 
growing all the way down into the reservoir. Now, a classic wet dry cycle will work for this orchid. And I saw in the unpotting video that we did when we switched her to lava rock that there were active roots in the reservoir while she was in Lekka. So those roots have been in the water in the reservoir as they were before. Whether they're active or not is not something I can discern at this point. My focus is to cultivate these roots here and do so in such a manner that Catlia Rex will stay in the collection. So far, so good. And I hope that it is obvious from this camera angle that the back pseudobulbs have also lost their shrivel. Everything seems to be plumping up very, very nicely for us. Speaking of plumping up, my last orchid, wow. What a quick turnaround. This one, I wouldn't say save the best for last, but dang, we're close to saying I'm saving the best for last. This is my Lelia Crispa. I did a video on her together with Michael McCarthy. Well, he wasn't talking in the video, but his Lelia Crispa and her development in bark with a wet-dry cycle, I compared the two cultures, and mine was in a pathetic state with Lekka and self-watering. So pathetic, as a matter of fact, that the pseudobulbs in the back, they weren't paper thin, or else we would not be seeing this orchid like this, but they were shriveled to the point I was thinking, yeah, this is, yeah, I'm rolling a dice here. It's not even 50-50. My prediction was she's gonna make it and that would be 30% she was gonna make it. But check this comeback out. We have reestablished a healthy status quo on the pseudobulbs in the back that were really, really shriveled. And look at the roots. Look at the roots. They are hydrating beautifully. Even there is a root tip in the back that I'm keeping an eye on because it's very close to touching the lava rock. That's gonna be okay. I've also flushed this orchid earlier today. So I wanted to show you how the roots are hydrating. And from almost next to nothing, I would say, I have never seen this Lelia crispa grow a growth like that. The bract is already up here, which will determine where the pseudobulb will be eventually. And that is already a third bigger than the one before. From nothing. I am so pleased to show this to you because if none of these orchids make it through my conditions, then it will have nothing to do with the setup. It will have nothing to do with the method of rescuing orchids with inorganic media that do not like evaporative cooling using lava rock. You can see the results here right now. And let me tell you, if I was heating my grow space and if I was giving them adequate light, I will not be throwing so many disclaimers into this video. So if you are struggling with orchids with LECA because it's new to you and you're not seeing the success that you were hoping for all i can say is on one condition before you switch into lava rock make sure that you've got root growth starting because all of these orchids were taken out of their lecker and put into lava rock with new roots starting that is the minimum requirement i would say in order for this to turn out to be up to this point all orchids had nubbin starting even if a media is not doing the trick for your orchid switching it to another media without active root growth starting can be super super duper risky and who wants to have a rescue orchid that's going to decline because we mean well just by switching the media and at the end of the day it's too much too soon of everything on a weak orchid so if you have any questions about what i have said with regards to how i am attempting to rescue these orchids through the next coming three months months in the hopes I can showcase them to you in 2024. Please use the comments and let's talk about specifics. Lava Rock is the inorganic version of bark, in my opinion. And we can talk about that in greater detail in the comments. And if you've made it to the end of the video, thank you so very, very much for watching. Keep your fingers crossed with me that everything is going to be okay for these orchids for the next three months, because then we will have cartwheels around the patio again. <laughs> I wish you a beautiful day on that one condition, though. Please, that you stay safe, because I would love to see you in the next video that you choose to watch. Take care. Bye.